In this video, I'm going to solve this question. An analyst runs two least squares regression, first of y on a single variable x and second of x on y. In both cases, she decides to include an intercept term. Which of the following is true of what she finds? And this is the information that is given to us. So we are given some information about the slope coefficients of both the regression, the associated t ratios, and the r square values that we get from both the regression. So these are the three things we are given information about. So first of all, let's write the models that are given to us. So we are given two models, model one and model two. So this is the second regression and this is the first regression. We are given the first regression is of y on a single variable x. Well, note that we are given small y and small x here, but because I'm familiar with the notation capital Y and capital X, so I'm going to use that only. So with this notation, we can write the stochastic population regression function like this. So yi is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus ui. So this is the stochastic population regression function for model number 1. And the sample counterpart of this, that is the stochastic sample regression function, we can write it as yi is equal to b1 plus b2 xi plus EI, where B1 and B2 are estimators of beta1 and beta2, which are the population parameters. So now let's find the slope coefficient of the first regression. So the slope coefficient of this regression using OLS is equal to summation small xi small yi divided by summation small xi square. And note that I'm using small xi and small yi here. And this is how I'm defining the small xi. So small xi is equal to capital XI minus x bar and small yi is equal to capital yi minus y bar. So with these notations, this is the formula to calculate the slope coefficient of this regression. Now let's switch to model number two and let's find the slope coefficient of model number two. So in model number two, we are running the regression of x on y. So we can write that in this case, the stochastic population regression function is xi is equal to a1, this is the intercept, plus a2, yi plus vi. And this is the stochastic population regression function in, in case of model number two. And the sample counterpart is xi is equal to small a1 plus small a2, yi plus pi and pi is the error here and a1 and a2 are estimators of capital a1 and capital a2 now using ols we can find that the slope coefficient in this case that is small a2 is equal to summation yi xi divided by summation yi squared so this is the slope coefficient of model number two now let's see what all information we are given in the parts about these two slope coefficients. So we are given in part A that the slope coefficient of the first regression will be the inverse of the slope coefficient of the second regression. That means according to part A, B2 should be equal to 1 divided by A2. And that means B2 should be equal to summation yi square divided by summation yi xi. Well, this is how we have defined B2 and there is no reason to believe that this B2 that we have defined in equation number one is equal to this B2 that we have defined in equation number two. So that means part A cannot be the right answer because the B2 is not the inverse of A2. And with this finding, we can say that even the part four cannot be the answer because in part four, it's written that the slope coefficient will be the inverse of each other and that's not the case. So that means part A is not the right answer and part D is not the right answer. So the right answer is either part B or part C. Now let's have a look at what part B and part C are saying about the associated T ratios and the R square values. Well, according to part B, the R square from the two regressions will be the same. And according to part C, the R square from the two regressions will be the same. So both the parts are saying the same thing about the R square. So that means there is no confusion related to R square. It is same for both the regressions, but just for the sake of completion, let's see why do we say that. So let's find the R square for model number one and model number two, and then we will make a comparison. Well, note that the R square corresponding to model number one can be written as, so we can write the R square here is equal to 
correlation y x whole square. And we can write this because this is a simple linear regression model with only two variables and this model also has an intercept term. When this is the case, the r square is equal to the correlation between y and x whole square. Well, similarly, the r square in case of model number two will be equal to the correlation between x and y whole square. And we know that the correlation between y x and the correlation between x y is one and the same thing. So that's why the r square in these two models is going to be same. Now let's see what are the parts B and C saying about the associated T ratios. Well, according to part B, the associated T ratio will be different. And by associated T ratio, they mean the T ratio corresponding to the slope coefficient. And in part C, they are saying that the associated T ratios will be same. Okay, so now our answer depends on the T ratios. So let's find the T ratios for the model number one and the model number two, and then we will make a comparison. Well, let's write the T ratio for model number one. This one here signifies that I'm talking about the T ratio for model number one. So T1 for the slope coefficient will be equal to B2 minus beta two divided by standard error of B2, where this beta two is the null hypothesized value of the population parameter. And unless stated otherwise, we are going to assume that this value of beta 2 is always equal to 0. So that means T1 is equal to B2 divided by standard error of B2. We know that B2 is equal to summation xi yi divided by summation xi square. And these are all small xi's and small yi's. And standard error of B2 is equal to under root sigma hat square divided by summation xi square, small xi square. So this is how we define b2 and standard error of b2. And we know that sigma hat square is equal to summation ei square divided by n minus 2. Let's put all these values into this formula. So we can write that using all these values, t1 is equal to summation xi yi divided by summation x i square and this is divided by under root sigma hat square divided by summation x i square and we can write that this is equal to summation x i y i divided by summation x i square multiplied by under root of summation x i square divided by under root sigma hat square and we know that sigma hat square is equal to summation ei square divided by n minus 2 so we can write that now t1 is equal to summation xi yi divided by actually we can cancel this and this instead of this we can write under root of summation xi square so this means now we can write t1 is equal to summation xi yi divided by under root summation xi square multiplied by 1 divided by under root summation e i square divided by n minus 2. So this is the t value corresponding to the slope coefficient in model number 1. Let's find the t value corresponding to slope coefficient in model number 2. So now we can write it as t2 and we know that t2 will be equal to a2 divided by standard error of a2 and we know that a2 is equal to summation y i x i divided by summation y i square and standard error of A2 is equal to under root sigma hat square divided by summation yi square. And all these are small xi's and small yi's. And similarly, we can define the sigma hat square in this case as summation pi square divided by n minus 2. Summation pi because we took pi as the error term here. And now putting these values, we can find that T2 is equal to summation yi xi divided by summation yi square divided by under root sigma hat square divided by summation yi square. So this is equal to summation yi xi divided by summation yi square multiplied by under root summation yi square divided by under root sigma hat square 
And if you put the value of sigma hat square, we get that this is equal to summation y i x i divided by summation y i square. Actually, we can write it as under root of summation y i square by canceling this. And this is multiplied by one divided by under root of summation p i square divided by n minus two. So this is the corresponding t value that we get from model number two. And now we have to make a comparison between this t value and this t value to see whether they are different or same. Well, as you can see, this comparison is not that simple. We have no information about what is the value of sigma e i square and what is the value of sigma p i square. So we will have to tweak this formula a bit to be able to make the comparison. So let's start with the formula t1. So this is the formula to calculate t1. And let's start making some changes so that we could compare these two formulas. So first of all, let's get rid of these under roots. So we can write that t1 square is equal to summation x i y i whole square divided by summation x i square multiplied by one divided by summation e i square and this n minus two we can write here. So this is the value of t1 square. Now we know that if we multiply this and divide this by summation y i square then this portion and this portion makes r square. So that means the t1 square is equal to r square multiplied by n minus 2 divided by summation e i square multiplied by summation y i square. So this is what we have now. But the problem is that we have to do something with this as well because we have no information about this. Well, we can do something. Note that r square is equal to 1 minus summation e i square divided by summation y i square. And this implies that summation e i square divided by summation y i square is equal to 1 minus r square. So that means we can write this thing as 1 divided by 1 minus r square. So this implies we can write that t1 square is equal to r square multiplied by n minus 2. And here we can write that this is 1 minus r square. Okay, so now we are done with the transformation. So what we have got is the t1 square is equal to r square multiplied by n minus 2 divided by 1 minus r square. Similarly, you can do the same transformation in case of t2 and you will get that t2 square is also equal to r square multiplied by n minus 2 divided by 1 minus r square. Now we know that the r square value for both the models is same. So this implies that t1 square is equal to t2 square. So now we know that the square of the t values is same. But what about t1 and t2? Are they also same? Because if t1 square is equal to t2 square, that does not necessarily imply that t1 and t2 are same. It could be the case that t1 square is 4 and t2 square is also 4. But t1 is equal to 2 and t2 is equal to minus 2. What if this is the possibility? Now let's see if something like this is possible or not. Note that this is how we defined t1. So t1 was equal to summation x i y i divided by summation x i square divided by standard error of b2. And this is how we define t2. t2 was equal to summation y i x i divided by summation y i square divided by standard error of a2. Note that this cannot be negative because this is the standard error and this also cannot be negative because it's a square. So the sign of t1 will depend on this summation x i y i this. So whatever the sign of summation x i y i is the sign of the t1 will be that. Similarly in case of t2 the standard error of a2 cannot be negative it's a standard error. Summation y i square cannot be negative. It's a square. So the sign of t2 will depend on summation y i x i. And note that summation x i y i and summation y i x i are one and the same thing. So whatever the sign of t1 is, t2 will carry the same sign. So that means this possibility cannot arise. So if t1 square is equal to t2 square, this would imply that t1 is equal to t2. 
So that means the associated T ratios are also same. So this implies that the answer to this question is part C where it says that the slope coefficient will be different. Well, yes, they are, but the associated T ratios and the R square from the two regressions will be the same. So the part C is the right answer and this is all for this question.